in photography. How y'all doing? Peace. Um, but yeah, how's everybody doing? So let's do the official intro now. So Leslie, how are you? I am doing great. How are okay. you? Uh, nervous. <laughs> Don't be. Uh, so uh, I'm thankful for you for uh, joining us today. So basically we were able to, uh, so this is my fault. I sent her a text message on Monday night saying, what do you think about doing this in person? She said, okay. So now I had Here to actually show up and do it. So now this is where we are. How are we looking on camera? Everybody cool? All right, so I'm talking to Jason Green off set. He's doing video for us tonight. Um, so do me a favor, tell everybody about yourself. Who are you? Who is Leslie Andrews? And go from there. Thank you, Larry. So um, I am Leslie Andrews, owner and uh, CEO of Leslie Andrews Photography. Okay. I am also owner of Midtown Collective Studios. Come on, owner. <laughs> and I specialize in fashion and beauty photography. I've been doing photography for going on about 20 years now. Um, really? Yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. So, yeah. So. so I always find that question interesting because people always ask me, when did you start? And I'm like, I don't ever really know how to answer that because I feel like you always kind of had a camera, right? Am I wrong? Did you always have a camera with you? Actually, no. Okay. I didn't pick up my first camera into my early 20s. Okay. And it was given to me. It started kind of as a hobby, and then it just segued there into the career that I have now. Got you. So what was that first camera that you got? Oh, my God. You're trying to make me think now. Um, it was a film Canon, and I do not remember the model. Okay. So we're sticking with So have you been Canon all your life? Yeah, well, I actually, yeah, I mean, professionally I have, but I own, I think I also own a Nikon oh, film okay. camera. I have a, what is it, a brawn color? A brawn color or something? Yeah. The brand medium, sounds right. Medium format. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, professionally it's always been Canon, though. I got you. Yeah. Okay. So for fun, you play with the other stuff. Yeah, for fun, I I've picked you. up a couple other different types of cameras. Okay. So yeah, my, me personally, I have a, my dad had like a, I don't know if it's an SL1, but it was like that five megapixel. I stole his, mm. and so I started shooting with that one. That was my first intro into digital. So I had film in high school, but I mean, there wasn't digital at the time. So when we came into, when I finally bought a camera, I was like, I'll buy a Canon. So that's all I've known. It's all I've shot with. Anytime somebody unfortunately hands me a Nikon, I have no idea what to do. So oh, that is you got to get trained on both. You got to I... be able to switch back and forth. The only thing I'll probably do is go to Fuji. Um, I've been kind of eyeing their 100, mm. me their 100 megapixels. But yeah. I can't. I can't. Yeah, go I would love a phase one, honestly. Oh, now, what yeah. are you currently shooting on? Right now, I am shooting with the Canon 5D. Okay. What body, what model? Uh, four, Mark okay. four. Mm -hmm. Got you. Yeah, I did, uh, so no, no thoughts of jumping to mirrorless yet? No, not really. Okay. Um, I would probably rather jump to medium format, but who knows? Okay, all right. So haven't made a definitive no to that you yet. You haven't gone fully down that road yet? Yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I follow a few photographers and some of them have jumped to medium format and I, that it's night and day, but I'm like, I don't, I've kind of bought into this Canon lifestyle right now, so I'm not jumping just yet, but yeah. One second, so we got a drink. Can we cheers that one? Yes, cheers. <laughs> We've got a little cocktail here in the studio, y'all. There's something that keeps the, my idea. the morale to... going here. <laughs> it's late, it's past my bedtime, y'all, so I had to have a little pick-me-upper. That has no Coke in it. That is, that is straight white, so I apologize. Um, <laughs> Coke's okay. right there. Um, but yeah, so what? So right now your go-to body is a 5D4. Mm -hmm. um, what yeah. is your favorite lens? What's the one that if you had to go out, mm. you only could bring one lens, what would you bring? Ooh, you know, that's a good question, Antoine. And it's not even so much what is my favorite lens. Okay. I believe that every lens has a purpose. I agree. So if I had to go out and I just needed a lens that was going to do the job no matter mm -hmm. what situation that I was in, it would probably be my 24 to 105. Gotcha. So, 105. Yeah, it would be my 24 to 105. But if I had to pick a 
favorite lens? Ooh, kind of a toss between my 100 okay. millimeter and my 50. Okay. 1.2. So why the 100? The 100, I love for shooting beauty. It's in okay. its macro. Yep. This is actually a really amazing lens, but as you know, it is a prime lens, mm -hmm. so... It's very limited. It's, it's limited, yeah. but it's beautiful. It's a great I would, And then I would say, secondly, my 50, because it's beautiful out in an outside situation, mm -hmm. the bokeh on it, and it's just a really good lens. Yeah. Outside and in studio. So when I started, uh, my first lens was the Nifty 50. So I got, I jumped right to that 1.8, and I was like, oh, bokeh. I'm a professional. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I got that blurry background. I was like, sold. Uh, you yeah, can tell me nothing sure. else. Um, what's funny is I never, I usually only shoot the 100 at weddings. So mm -hmm. whenever I'm doing like those detail shots, um, but I never did portraits until last April. And I actually did like some portraits with it. And I was like, this is a really good lens. Like I never actually tried it in that fashion. It's amazing. I use it with all my beauty work. Okay. Yeah. So my, my go-to is the 70 to 200 in all my beauty. So I never really mm. think, I don't really, I hardly use primes to be That's honest. That's interesting. Why is yeah. that? <laughs> no, I mean, I have, I own that lens. Mm -hmm. I don't really use it that okay. often, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's heavy. It is heavy. It's very heavy. It is heavy. I mean, when we're done, I'll let you try that one. Um, yeah. It's a lot smaller. But um, the reason that I personally like the 70 to 200, if I was to go out, that would be mine, is, is that 70 to 200. But I would do, just because sometimes when I'm shooting, I want to get like knee to head mm. or foot to head mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. the other space. And so I'm able to do that and then also punch into like a headshot level. And I don't have to worry about telling the client that I've changed. You know, they might see the lens move, but they're still posing. Whereas my primes, I always feel like I have to kind of really adjust myself. Mm -hmm. So I tend not to, I probably, it's probably, I'm just lazy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I feel like we, sh I shoot probably at like 6'3", F8. So I don't really need the, the prime sharpness, mm -hmm. you know. So that's kind of the reason that I go that way. Mm. But yeah, you should try it sometimes. It is yeah. heavier. It, it gets, it's taxing. That's why I always yeah. use those hand grips. I've owned it for a minute, probably some years. Yeah. Is that your uh, one of your first big purchases, or what was the what was the first big lens that you bought? Like the, I can't believe I'm doing this lens. That one probably was. Yeah, that it was probably mine. was. Yeah. Now that I think about yeah. it, yeah. Because uh, I remember all the all the hype about it. Because every mm -hmm. show that I watched, they were like, "Oh, get a seventy to two hundred. Yeah. And then as soon as I got that seventy to two hundred. Um, as soon as I got the 7200, I was like, I get it. I understand why they like this. Um, mm -hmm. So Larry, Larry's asking a question. He's like, do you miss shooting film? Oh, you know what? Honestly, it's been such a long time since mm -hmm. I've shot film. I started shooting originally on film. Okay. That's how I started my hobby in a dark room okay so you processing your developing my own film wow um enlarging my own pictures mm -hmm. everything um okay. you know and i um recently purchased a home and i was thinking of putting a dark room in my basement so okay. it's something that i might i don't necessarily quote miss it because mm -hmm. it's been so many years since i've even done it done anything with film but it's something that I was thinking of going back to, gotcha. just to, as something, you know, kind of exploring the creative juices. Be able to kind of... Yeah, get some more creativity again. going, yeah. just playing, you know. It's funny because um, I find that it, once you kind of transition to making this a professional job, you tend not to play anymore. Facts. Yeah, <laughs> that's so that facts. Too? Yeah, and... Um, and so I'm always looking for creative outlets because yep. of that, because mm -hmm. everything is about work. And it's like, I got to the point where I didn't even really, to be honest, mm -hmm. to be like totally transparent. It's a no judgment space. Don't judge. <laughs> but I didn't even want to take my camera out if I was not getting paid. I'm, I am the same way. Because it was one of those things, people see you with a camera and you brought your camera just for fun and they're like, oh, you're taking pictures? Yeah, come um, on over here, take me and my no, mom. No, I'm, I'm like just, no. you know, so I stopped honestly even bringing my camera mm -hmm. out unless you're paying me to bring my camera. Yeah, I um, 
I know for me, I'm the same way. Like family events are like, Anthony, you didn't bring your camera? I was like, no. <laughs> like, I want nothing to do with the camera right now. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. let's go into that. What is your, uh, what is the, the one shoot that you're most proud of? Or what's that, that larger shoot that you're kind of surprised you got and you're, you're happy about it? I would have to say my Cream of Nature shoot, my Cream of Nature campaign. Okay. Because going into it, I, I didn't honestly know that it was going to be as big as it ended up yeah, being with so right. many billboards and like people sending me pictures mm -hmm. of the billboards from like other states. That's cool. Like, for instance, when they did, what is it, in New Orleans, they did the big fashion, what is it called? Help me out. Uh, the Hair. Da, da, da. Um, in June. I know, the, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the name. I'm not sure. It's so the fashion week or something. Yeah. We'll <laughs> so yeah, they had all of the billboards okay. down there. People were sending me shots of it um, at all of the big hair mm -hmm. festivals like here and hair campaigns, yeah. Bronner Brothers. There were all my pictures were blown up. It used to be one right off of Howe Mill. Nice. Yeah, so okay. it was like a one. proud moment for me. It gotcha. was like a really proud moment. Um, other than that, I also did a campaign for, it was a part of Martyr. So okay. it was actually a part of their, where they were trying to get Georgia commute, where they're trying to get people to commute. Okay. And that was a billboard campaign too. But it wasn't like t my typical work. It was uh -huh. very commercial and yeah. a lot of people probably wouldn't have even wouldn't known, recognize that it's recognized it. Yeah, yeah bec but, but that was like a proud moment to see my work big like that. That's the thing about commercial work is um, I follow another photographer on YouTube and he talks about that um, your editorial gets you booked for commercial but your yeah. commercial looks nothing like what you do. Like, they love your work, and they're like, hey, shoot this ice cube, and you're just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, so true, yeah, so, so true, that's, so that's so always true. interesting. Yeah. Um, so when, so I, I was gonna actually segue to, when was the first moment that you realized you could probably do this professionally? Ooh, you know what? It was really early on, okay. and it was, it was honestly, I guess I could just kind of tell a little bit of the story behind it okay. of how I even got into it as a profession, mm -hmm. because initially it was nothing that I would have thought about doing as a, okay. as a career. Okay. But it was around the time that I got my first camera, I was taking a black and white photo class at a local college, and okay. that's where I was in the dark room a lot. Mm -hmm. And it was really just about my, uh, my hobby, just like an, a creative outlet, because I've always been like a super creative person. Okay. I actually went to a high school that was the High School of the Arts okay. in Wisconsin. So, yeah, so I was oh, always. Wisconsin? Yeah, <laughs> I know I'm not plugging Wisconsin, but yeah. <laughs> but it was, I've always been like totally a creative at heart. Okay. And I ended up getting laid off from my job. And it was actually my manager that pulled me aside and told me to, like, mm. literally pursue photography. Go do this. Go do it. Yeah. And I was like, what? And then he was like, yeah, you're so passionate about it. Yeah. And, that, and I wasn't even taking the style of pictures that I'm taking now. Yeah. But he just saw my drive. Yeah. And was like, you could do, you this. do this. Yeah. And he kind of, like, embedded that in me. Man, and that's. When I knew, I was like, well, if this guy, I mean, he's, he owns the company. He's mm -hmm. a self-made man, never went to college. If he sees driving me, yeah. then I know I can do it. And that's kind of followed me throughout my career because mm -hmm. I know that if someone recognized that in me, mm -hmm. that it was obviously there. Yeah. And so I just really just manifested it into okay. what it is today. You know, I did go to school. Um, I went to the Art Institute. Okay. But I just always felt like, that was my destiny, you know, that was what I was destined to do. So it's funny because you're actually the first, so this is episode five. Um, you're the first person that I've talked to thus far. Milwaukee. Someone wanted to know where well, in Milwaukee. Wisconsin. <laughs> you're the first person that I've talked to that actually did this in college. Because most of the people that I've spoken to, they actually started, um, they actually started doing something else mm -hmm. and then out of necessity kind of grew into photography or it was a hobby and it grew into this into this future 
So it's interesting. You know, it's, it's cool to hear you actually went to school for it. I did, and I'm not like gonna say I'm a, like a huge advocate for people going to school that. for photography, but at the time when I got into photography, it was still a more exclusive mm -hmm. career path, or gotcha. you know, something more exclusive. It wasn't like it is now, where Anyone it was digital take... cameras. Yeah. When I got into photography, it wasn't really a lot of. It, I think the digital cameras were like one megapixel, two yeah. megapixels. <laughs> it was nothing that you would be considered Cell professional. And, and so within my manager at the time telling me that I should pursue photography, I went home and started researching it mm -hmm. online, you know, and it wasn't that many, it was no social media. Yeah. This was like 2004, like okay. early 2004. And I started like Googling mm -hmm. and Yahoo. I think it was like the <laughs> Yahoo yeah. search engine. You are telling on yourself. Um, Yahoo right. Is... <laughs> you know, okay. And I was looking, I was Yahoo like, was okay, how do I, um, how to become a professional mm -hmm. photographer? And the only thing, honestly, that was popping up for me were schools, okay. courses to take. Okay. And so that's how I landed on that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, fast forward 20 years later, there's so many other ways that you can learn photography. Okay. Um, and so you know youtube university there's classes you can take from other photographers i'm a graduate you can you know take like mentor underneath someone mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. you can assist those were not really like avenues. huge avenues you yeah. know like there honestly even when i got out of school i couldn't find anyone to assist under mm -hmm. Yeah, they were like, you have a really strong portfolio. You, you could just go straight into photography. But honestly, I didn't know anything about the business. I kind of just wanted to be yeah. underneath another photographer that was already successful. Learn it. But it was very competitive during mm -hmm. that time. So people were looking at you like, oh, if your work is good, I don't want you assisting underneath me and yeah. still my clients. You yeah, know, gotcha. like kind of that competitive mm -hmm. outlook on things. And so... Of course, you know, it's not like that now. There's tons of opportunities mm -hmm. for you to break into photography without going that route of school. Yeah, I'm a big proponent of that just because, um, I mean, I feel like if you are, I'm a big proponent of if you're very passionate about anything, you can get the information. Yeah, you the can find it. The information is there. You know, because people ask me questions all the time and I'm just like, there's a ton of YouTube videos. Oh, on yeah. It's out up. there. Like, if you want to learn, it's out there. And I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. even with digital, because it's so user-friendly okay. versus a manual camera. Exactly. For me, I felt like I wouldn't change my path because I felt like it really taught me the core of photography. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, I've met photographers that didn't even know what an f-stop was. Like, or ISO. They just go and get a, their digital camera. And they got it on um, auto. auto. Go. And go. And they're in business. <laughs> so. Jason's saying it's me. Okay, Jason. <laughs> you know, and so I learned, going to school did teach me all mm -hmm. of that. And I'm not good at math. So I had to learn all of the equations. Yep. Okay. What if I want to take a stop away? And, you know, it could get a little complicated. But yeah. because it was, I learned on film. Mm -hmm. I can make sense of it. Yeah. If I would have been learning on digital, I would have taken the easy route. I've been like, I don't want to feel, figure this out, you yeah, know, like I that's too you. much. Yeah. But, I know, but um, I know a lot of people that it's funny, and you know who you are. Forgive me, <laughs> I'm telling the story. But um, I had a uh, I had a friend of mine, and I started this job, and they're like, Oh, you should talk to this guy. Talk to this guy. He's also a photographer, you know, because they always want to know what you do on the side. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, Okay, so I was talking to him. A year later, we're in the studio together, and he's like, oh, I'm going to take your picture. I was like, all right, whatever. I knew he was a photographer, whatever. So I handed him my camera. He's like, all right, what do I do now? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, oh, I just keep mine in auto. I was like, get my camera back. <laughs> <laughs> like, we are not doing this right now. Yeah, so, yeah, there's quite a few. I was like, the, the um, world definitely allows you to cheat a lot more. It does. I mean, I am a firm believer that if you're going to get into photography on a professional level, mm -hmm. that you need to really learn the craft, the basics, the, the f-stops, the ISO, the aperture, you need to learn that yep. because you could be put in a situation where auto's not going to work for you. Exactly. So, and then just if, if 
if you're doing it professionally, you should be a professional. Exactly. So, I mean, if you're doing it as a hobby, that's fine. You know, mm -hmm. make it work. But as a professional, those are things you need to know. Yeah, I know when um, I was watching a YouTube video in the first, and somebody was explaining the exposure triangle to me, and I was like, it clicked. And once it clicked, I was like, say less, I got the rest. Yeah. Like, I was like, okay, once I understood the exposure triangle, I was good with manual. Um, and also, for me, I think a big challenge and a big uh, fear point for a lot of photographers is flash. Like, they, they shoot so much with natural light that they don't really ever bother learning flash, and so they don't know how to, how to shape light, mm -hmm. how to create a scene. Um, and so I think the combination of flash as that fourth point of understanding, I think, is really, is really key. Did you yeah. always start out with flash, or how? Cause I know you were doing black and whites back in the day, so I guess you had to. No, okay. I didn't. I didn't Mostly have my natural. first studio light class until I got to college. Okay. As a hobby, I was just use, working with natural light. Yeah. Yeah. I had those. Um, I had those little Kodak mm -hmm. winders. That was my first experience. Yeah, <laughs> those were fun. That's like a novelty now. I have boxes and boxes of old photos, and it's crazy because like. Anytime I find a photo, like we moved recently and I found a photo and it's, it's not even my photo, but uh, my wife was like, oh, you want to throw this away? And I was like, you can't. It's a photo. Right. Like you'll never get oh this moment God. back. You don't know if this person's still with us. You don't know anything. Like let's send it to the person in it and at least let them have that memory. But, you know, for me, I always think like photos are such an important snapshot of time that it's something that I take very seriously. Yeah, I have all my old photos. Yeah, I don't throw anything out. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm notorious. I have, like, old hard drives and stuff that sit <laughs> all of mine. People are like, but you have, like, three copies of this. I was like, yeah, but I don't know what I'll need. I have all the masters. Um, so talk about uh, how did you build your portfolio when you first got started? Like, what was your, what was your trick as far as, like, building that body of work originally? I did a lot of model tests building okay. my port. I mean, if we're going to go back all the way to when I was at the Art Institute, well I don't do know if you want to go story. back that far, but yeah. I mean, whatever you want to We were talk. required um, as a part of our graduation mm -hmm. to have a, port, a printed portfolio. Okay. And so a lot of the photos in it, I, I knew immediately going into school that I like taking pictures of people. So I knew I wanted mm -hmm. to specialize in portrait. I didn't know I wanted to go into fashion and beauty, but I knew that okay. I, that's what I, my subjects were people and mm -hmm. getting them to like really be transparent in front of the camera and showing different sides of them mm -hmm. and different angles. Um, and so I would just find people. I know I like, I wish I could go back to that, but mm -hmm. it's like, Life doesn't really allow me that. You don't have the time but right yeah, now. I would just find people on the street that look interesting and like pull them in. Hey, do you want to come and take a portrait in the studio? <laughs> you want to come in the white van? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, there's a picture up there on the stairway of a guy behind a window. I don't okay. know if you've seen that one. And that's one of the pictures that I actually used in my portfolio. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. That like many that. years ago. That's what's yeah. Like, but it's still a problem. It's, it's, um, I know when I, so when I first started, I wanted to shoot everything I could find. Mm -hmm. um, so I shot bees. I shot anything I could put in front of the camera. Um, I, I am mostly introverted, but I, I call myself a, select, a social, uh, selectively social. And so when I'm out and about, I can talk to people. And so I like to do that with the camera. Mm -hmm. um, and so... I've always, I always gravitated towards portraiture just because when I was coming up, I was always looking at fashion magazines. I was always looking at that stuff. And I was just like, how do they do this? And then when, you know, Tumblr was my rabbit hole. And so I'd get down there and I started oh, following yeah. models. And I was like, okay, how do they do this? How do they do that? And then, you know, I just wanted to understand how to shape light. So for me, even in anatomy and physiology class, like I was just so enamored with the human form that I was mm -hmm. like I knew I've always mm -hmm. wanted to shoot people yeah um so that's the way that I go any questions so far y'all I'm sorry we we uh we we have been just talking and not really checking hold on a sec uh hold on a sec it's uh where in Wisconsin shut up Jason that was Jason hold on a second 
Okay, so we'll keep rolling. Um, so yeah, I, I know, um, so you don't have any time to do test portraits anymore. No, no test shoots coming in oh, these days? Oh no, I do test, I do tests all the time. Okay. I just don't pull people off the street anymore. Gotcha. And it's like a different, culture's changed a lot okay. since then. It's like, I don't even know like if people like with just mm -hmm. approaching people now, it's, people it's don't even like to be approached anymore. It's yeah. like the whole culture of things have changed. So. I mean, I, I do tests, I just go straight to the agencies. Okay. Like this was more like when I was in school, I, was, mm -hmm. I wasn't necessarily looking for models to test with. Okay. I was just looking for, oh, here's an interesting man on the street. Something is interesting about him. Maybe mm -hmm. he has a long beard. Maybe he has a lot of wrinkles in his face. Maybe it's just something that I'm looking at yep. and I want to capture. So that was more of a place where that was coming from, just okay. walking up to people. Now, you, can, you don't just walk up to people anymore. <laughs> people on their phones, they're like, who are you? I mean, excuse me, like, you have, huh? you have to like who? show them well, your We don't work. know you. Yeah, What's your know. IG? You got a million followers? I'm not, you know, it's yeah. like, it's, it's not, it's, the culture has changed too much to do that. What do you feel about the um, follower verification? Because I do find that a lot of people are like, oh, they look at your followers to verify that you can do the job. How do you yeah, feel about that? so that's a big thing, you know, mm -hmm. like having enough followers. I think I'm like right at a decent amount. I yeah, think I yeah. have like... I mean, you're doing pretty well. Yeah, I'm at about 14K, but okay. I look at it like I should have more. I jumped on the Instagram train late in the game, mm -hmm. though, to be honest. Okay. Instagram had been out for several years, and I just was like, oh, I'm I good. Know. I don't need to be on that. Yeah. I got Facebook. I got a website. Mm -hmm. And by the time I jumped onto the Instagram with a Instagram page for my photography, I had a personal, like, private one, but... Mm -hmm. The algorithms have changed. Yep. Like, I've worked damn hard to build my following, and it's all organic. Hey, I am the same <laughs> way, and my little, my little 3,200, yeah. 3,203, last time I checked, I am proud of those 3,000. So. Yeah, I think I've had my um, photography Instagram for six years, okay. and Instagram has been out for, what, 10? Probably 10 now, yeah. 10 now. Yeah. Man. So I got on a train a little late, and the algorithms were made it very difficult because, you know, it All used to be people could just post photos, post photos and yeah. they could have 10, 20,000 followers. It's not... Post the memes, be yeah. 5,000 deep. You're like, okay, I'm not doing this with y'all. Um, so when you, when you go to the agencies, how do you build those relationships? Or what's your trick as far as, like, uh, fostering that relationship? Um, well, I started with the agent, most of the local agents here and agencies here in Atlanta okay. and just going to meet with them. Okay. Um, and so the relationships that I've had with them, I've had for quite a few years. Okay. Um, and so just taking in my port and going to meet with them, taking them a gift, you know, and, gotta, gotta, you know, kind of smooth them smooth over them a little over. bit, gotcha. test with their initially start with just testing with their models so they could see that they like your work and it's mm -hmm. consistent because even though they could look at your work on your website and okay, you have good work. We want to see what you could do with our models yeah, is what they're going to say. Yeah. So you still have to like, go through that process. Mm -hmm. So once you're done going through that process, you get put on their test photographer list. So if they sign a new model, you. you're on the referral list. It might like, just on a typical list, you might have like six to 10 mm -hmm. photographers that models could choose from. They could say, okay, pick one of these photographers to go shoot your port with. And then they're bringing you paid work. Got you. Um, in addition to that, um, I also update my portfolio on a quarterly basis. Okay. So, and I actually have a test shoot tomorrow okay. at 9 a.m. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I choose to, to update my portfolio, and then when I get ready to update it, I'll mm -hmm. call the agency. I'll have them send me over a package of models, and then I'll select from that package of available okay. models. That's and then cool. I'll just put together a shoot of what I want to do. Nice. You know, what's funny is um, all of mine has been kind of either – organically grown from people seeing my work and saying, hey, I want to shoot with you or a referral from someone else. Um, I've always wondered, because I've heard a few photographers that talk about like actually having an agent themselves mm -hmm. um, or working with agencies, and I've never actually 
stepped out and done that. So it's interesting to talk about that because it's, I mean, I know where I want to go. And I think mm -hmm. if it's in that same realm, then that makes sense to, to you know, go where the, where the people are going first. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that works. Um, I think so, we had a question oh, here. What's our question? Um, uh, do you feel comfortable in front? Oh. How, how is it getting in front of the camera? You've been doing some shoots lately. I've been uh, <laughs> stalking your IG. You, you know what? Honestly, I've always kind of felt comfortable in front of the camera. Okay. I, but as a photographer, I've often just taken a back seat to that. Mm -hmm. When I was a teenager, I did a little bit of modeling. And then I just kind of was like, you know what? I'm good. But I think as a photographer now, having the, like, the eye and knowing Mm -hmm. what a good photo is supposed to look like on the opposite side i'm like super critical now when i'm being photographed i want to see like yeah. how's the light and are you Why capturing you know <laughs> you know so now i'm a little on the more critical side of yeah. things but um i i like being in front of the camera that's okay. something that i'm actually venturing into not necessarily like the being in front of the camera mm. but speaking okay. and within that comes being in front of an audience mm -hmm potentially yeah. being in front of a camera. Okay. So yeah, I want to speak, I want to teach mm -hmm. and mentor and all of those things, so. Okay, yeah, so yeah. eventually you'll need to, to get the full package that we offer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so my, it's funny, cause my, um, I had my first branding shoot back in August and my friend Jason, not, not Jay, no, I'm sorry, my friend Jay, I always mix them up, don't, don't do that. Um, my friend Jay, he, shot me and the whole shoot i was like how's that can i can i see it? should i put my hand should i move this and he's like dude i got you and i was right. like right okay i'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna just let you lead but the whole time i was in my head like okay where is this light coming from why is he doing this so <laughs> it's, it's hard to let it's hard for us to let go um how long do you think you'll keep doing photography? What is your end game? Do you feel like you're oh gonna my stay god here? i'm never gonna stop doing photography okay i mean at this level of my career, mm -hmm. of course, I'm going to have multiple streams of income, mm -hmm. but I don't think I'll ever get to a point where I just put down the camera totally, like, I oh, agree. I'm not picking up a camera again, yeah, you know, I'm like, done with this life. yeah, I'm always going to, even if I'm only shooting 10% or 20%, mm -hmm. I'm always, that's always going to be my original passion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Um, I knew I wanted to do this professionally when my friend at work asked me, hey man, if you won the lottery, what would you do? I was like, I'll be a photographer. And he's like, damn, you found that? And I was like, he was like, you know, it's awesome that you found something that you're doing that mm. you would do. You yes. Know? And I was just like, I never really thought about it that way. Cause I was like, honestly, if I won the lottery, I'd just open a studio, I'd shoot what I want to shoot and chill. like. It's what I'm passionate about. And um, I talk to friends because I'm always looking at people. And I think yeah. that, um, do you ever, do you get that when you're out and you're just like analyzing somebody's face or like looking at how the light falls on somebody? All the time. Okay. I'm always looking for symmetry in yep. someone's face. Mm -hmm. Like all the time. <laughs> now you're like, are you looking I'm at like me? Good. Or right? like, yep. And like if the person's face isn't like symmetrical, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'll always like catch myself looking at yeah. the, I don't want to call them defects or abnormalities, like the, uh, inconsistencies, the I guess. The uniqueness of them. The uniqueness. That is a you. great the way to put it. Hey, Dion, how yes. are you? I, uh, I was at dinner once and um, our waitress walked up and I looked at her and I was just kind of like, I, cause she had like some lights behind her. And so she was like, what are you looking at? And I was like, I'm sorry. My wife's like, he's a photographer, forgive him. And I was like, okay, my bad. But uh, I, I realized- You were checking her out a no, minute I was over there like, <laughs> I actually gave her my card. I was like, I'd love to work with you someday. Cause I was like, her face was so unique. And then she had like yeah. this really crazy hair. I was like, but really photograph well. Oh. Yeah, I'm always like, I am unique, mm -hmm. the uniqueness. Uniqueness, we're going yes. with that. That's our we're term gonna go with that. Okay. We're gonna go with the uniqueness. So you talked earlier about fashion and beauty. Mm -hmm. Is, and do you feel like that's your niche? How did you get to that point of finding that niche? It got to me, I guess. Okay. It kind of found me, like coming out of 
coming out of the Art Institute mm -hmm. um, with my portfolio, a bunch of models just started contacting me and okay. wanting me to shoot them. There, I guess I just had that that fashion eye. Okay. And it would make sense because a lot of the photographers that I admire, like the Annie Leibovitz, mm -hmm. you know, that's the style that I kind of gravitated to, that specific lighting. Yep. So it really found me. Like, models started connecting with me, and, and actually an agent, um, a talent agency, hired me to shoot for them. Okay. And so I just started building a heavy portfolio, you know, like, that's what I was getting paid to do, yeah. and that's what I was it getting known to do. So that, it, so. Um, in recent years... Um, especially like within the past two and a half, three years, I've kind of segwaying to more branding. Okay. But I believe like with everything that I shoot, it's always going to have that same kind of fashion lighting, mm -hmm. that element that I'm bringing the more drama to the picture. Yep. It's never going to be the flat lighting. It's never going to be boring and it's mm -hmm. never going to be basic. Okay. No basic. <laughs> she said no basic you know energy. <laughs> I was going to go with you, but I, I'm trying to keep it monetized on YouTube, so forgive me. No, yeah, so it's always going to be okay. the, a little bit elevated, you know? I, I believe it. You know, I look at your work, and um, when I first... So, I actually, I found you guys on accident. Okay. Which is uh, accident. So I, Happy I, accident. I definitely. And uh, actually, so this space that we're shooting in was the very first space that I shot with you guys. I, I swore by L for months. And then I finally went over to C and I was like, okay, I like this because it has yeah. a space. And I was like, I like this. Um, but it's funny because I used to shoot out of a space. It was more of an event space. So I had to set everything up. Um, and then we went there one day and the power was out. And I was like. I got, uh, I got four shoots today, all back to back. And I was like, I need to find a space. I reached out to my friend. She knew Demond. She's like, oh, I know a place down on the fours. I was like, OK, let me know. I walked in. He gave, he gave me five hours. And ever since then, I've been a member. So how did you guys start awesome. Midtown Collective? What was the vision? The vi we um, OK, ooh, this is this story might segue us on up to 10 PM. Go but ahead. We yeah, got, and we're actually at, uh, <laughs> We're at 950, actually. Yeah, so originally, um, the first studio that I got in Atlanta upon moving, I was in California, moved back to Atlanta, and I got a studio over at King Plow. And so mm -hmm. we, I, it was just really exclusively photography, but in mm -hmm. order for, like, to kind of build up that stream of um, revenue before mm -hmm. I could get like booked and busy yep. we started doing like little small events mm -hmm. and subletting it out to other photographers okay. and unbeknownst to us our lease did not allow us to do that oh so then I was just breaking the rules yeah well <laughs> it wasn't defined it wasn't defined okay so yeah um but then we ended up like okay well let's find a space that will allow us to do that Okay. And so that's how we landed here. And upon landing here, I decided, because before we were not Midtown Collective at that point, mm -hmm. um, I actually had a partner at the time and we called ourselves Culture Collective. Okay. So with breaking that partnership, I had to let that name go. And mm -hmm. then I was like, well, I don't really want to call it Leslie Andrews Studio because if it's another photographer and they're shooting, I don't want them to feel like, you know, like, oh, I'm at somebody else's studio, yeah. you know? And yeah, I, I was you. like... Because I've been in that situation before I got my studio where I had to rent other people's studios mm -hmm. and I'd be just like, meet me at this location. <laughs> you know, we're shooting Don't at worry this about studio. it. <laughs> this is and the number. And so I wanted a kind of universal name mm -hmm. that for bringing on other photographers to shoot here, yeah. they could call it their home. Yep. And then I didn't want it to be like directly associated with me. Oh, like you're shooting at Leslie's studio. No, this is your studio too. Yep. You know, so... We landed on the name Midtown Collective because we're in Midtown and it's collective. It's it all makes about, sense. I'm all about collaborating mm -hmm. and I have this saying collaboration over competition. Two weeks in a row, 
uh, you're the second person to say that. Yeah, uh, that's uh, my like, that's my little coin phrase, mm -hmm. collaboration over competition. over competition. So I'm seeking to collaborate with other photographers. Mm -hmm. I'm never gonna look at somebody else as competition. I'm always yeah. going to be a source where they can come to me, mm -hmm. be totally transparent to help them, mentor, teach them about business, give them whatever pointers that I can. And just be a source of information because yep. I know for me, when I was starting out in photography, you didn't have it. I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. It was a struggle. People were not giving me tidbits or yep. dropping gems. I had to figure it out on my own, if I'm, you will. I'm with you. <laughs> so I didn't want to be like that. Mm -hmm. Like if I, someone comes in here, I wanted it to be a, a you know, a collective. Yeah, I got it. So, that's how we landed on that. And then it just segued into events. And mm -hmm. then we ended up being able to like get another sweet, sweet C. Mm -hmm. We had to turn down before we got sweet C. People were coming to us and like, we got a party of 90 people. Like, you can't do 90 people. Yeah, we can't do 90. And as you know, DeMond yeah. hates to turn down money. He's like the <laughs> finance person. Yeah. So we ended up getting the other suite. Mm -hmm. And as you know, now we're moving expanding. on to expanding into a 5,000 square feet studio. So Man, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, it's all about, you know, just building mm -hmm. growth and just taking risks. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, you guys, you got, I, I applaud you because I, um, when I first came here, um, I liked a lot of the things that you guys were doing because I've worked in other spaces where they booked you back to back and you had to literally be out right at the, at the drop of 10 p.m. I've been to those yep. spaces. <laughs> and it's like somebody was at the door waiting on you. Yeah. And you're just like, yo, can I unpack? Like, let me just, let me pack this up. And so, um, and one thing I do love about the space, everywhere, both spaces are so welcoming. And every time people walk in, they're like, it smells so good in here. Mm -hmm. Man, is this yours? And I'm like, I'm a member. I'm a member. <laughs> it's yours. I just say, I just hey, say it's I'm yours. a member. Because when people yours. come by and yeah. be like, can I rent your space? I'll be like, I'm going to talk to somebody. I got you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so expansion, you guys nervous about that? What made you decide to go into the bigger space? Just... Be bigger better things you know you. just taking advantage we saw an opportunity mm -hmm. we wanted to be able to have bigger events yeah because we are still even with having c turning down the mm -hmm. big events yep and like corporate Cor events yep so we're trying to actually break into that corporate sector okay. where we are able to do activations gotcha. and they're coming in and they're totally transforming the space on a huge level. Yep. So that was kind of like the mindset behind that, like mm -hmm. really building a corporate relationship. Um, I don't want to say similar to the gathering spot, but a little bit of that vibe. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, realistically, like, corporate they they just need to know that they have the space right and also that they can they they can come in and do what they need to yeah um, so they're fine with transforming a space but they mm -hmm. just need to know they can get it um so yes uh we have a question it was talking about what advice would you give an up-and-coming photographer someone who wants to pursue it as a career path just go for it just, just do it yeah. Just start and don't let anybody kill your dream. Don't let anybody mm -hmm. tell you what you can't do. Exactly. Don't worry about what the competition is doing. Focus on yourself. Focus on creating your own lane. Yep. There is enough room for everybody to eat. So with the, you being a new photographer, mm -hmm. you're going to be looking at other people's work and, oh, am I good enough? Or I need to make my work look like this. Don't do that. Yep. Focus on what your lane is, mm -hmm. what you want to do to make yourself stand out, and just do you. Yep. It's not, I mean, you can still look at other people's work, but don't compare yourself to what anybody else is doing. Because you. when I tell you that the internet is a lie, so you might look at somebody Bro. with a, a hundred thousand following, and they making five hundred dollars a month. Yeah. <laughs> so focus on what you are passionate about. Mm -hmm what you want to do in your field, create, create a niche for yourself. Yep. And that's going to make you unique. Mm -hmm. And then monetize just it. monetize it and create an excellent customer service experience. So it's all about the experience that you are creating for your client mm -hmm. and worry about that and you'll be successful. <laughs> uh, uh, Demon says, our, our casa, su casa. <laughs> <laughs> um, I totally agree with that. Um, I am a firm believer of just start. 
Just do it. Because um, I know for me, when I got started, I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. Um, I actually had a friend of mine, she photographed our wedding. And when she did that, I was just like, I went to high school with you. Like, okay, this is possible. You know, like that mm -hmm. was, that. it just kind of opened my eyes to know that it was possible. And I think once that happened, I just started shooting. And I have a cousin, she wants to model. I was like, yo, let's go to the park. I'll shoot you. And we were just practicing. Yeah. So um, I'm a big proponent of that. And I, I knew I was kind of on the right path once people started sending me my own work mm -hmm. to then be like, this is what I want to do. And I'm like, but I did that already. Can we do something different? You know, yeah. but once I started getting that, because everyone would send you Pinterest boards and they're like, I like this photographer style. I'm like, all right, well, I'm not going to do that, but we'll use it as inspiration. We'll go from there um, and go right there. Uh, one second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, my next question. I always ask this question. It's a kind of a free flow moment. Mm -hmm. You don't have to name names. We can protect the innocent. What is one of your worst photo shoot memories, experiences? What's one of those that you were just like, you cringe every time you think back to it? <laughs> Oh, it had to be this like wedding from hell that I did. <laughs> and this is why I do not do, do weddings. weddings like this is why I'm such a firm believer in mm -hmm. find your niche exactly. and stick with it. Yep. Don't try to do everything. And you know why people don't want to find their niche? Because they don't want to turn down money. Exactly. And early on in my career, I didn't want to turn down money. Mm -hmm. If money came knocking, I was going to say yes I'll to do it. What you need. And somebody wanted me to do a wedding and I ended up saying yes to this wedding. Um, this is at this point, this is when I was in California. It was on the beach. Okay. So, and it was a windy day. Harsh light. It was just like <laughs> everything that you could possibly think to go wrong yeah. went wrong. And ultimately in the end, don't eat, like, don't judge. I ended up inadvertently either losing or erasing <laughs> one of the memory cards. You, you threw it into the ocean? I self-sabotaged <laughs> myself. This is how bad it was. You it was threw like, it into the ocean. you know, I, I don't even know to this day what happened to it. Luckily, it wasn't all the images. Yeah. But yeah, in the long run, I had to end up giving them like half the money back because of that. So, and in the end, I said, I will never do another mm. wedding again. I got you. So one and done? Of that. One, I'm, that wasn't the first one. That was the last one. Uh, that was the last client. I got you. Client's wedding. That now I'll do a wedding. You have to be a close friend yeah. or family member. I, I will. You. No pressure. Like when you approach me, you got to be like, no pressure. This is what I'm going to let you do your thing. I'm not going to bridezilla you. <laughs> I did. Uh, what's funny is, uh, so we have a company that we do wedding, well, more like production, but we do take on wedding clients. Um, and I built a whole brand around that. But what I find is that um, when I first started, I, I did a, uh, my cousin was getting married and she was asking my brother who was filming the behind the scenes, hey, can you film my wedding? And he was like, oh, I don't know if I can make it. I was like, I'll do it. And so mm. I just went up there and I just figured it out. I knew a few of the settings and I was just kind of like, you know, knew what I saw in other wedding videos and I was like, I'll just do it. And she was like, okay, what are you going to charge me? I was like, I'm not charging you anything. I'm going to send you the file, whatever you think is worth, you can pay me that. Mm -hmm. If you don't think it's worth anything or you don't want to pay, don't worry about it. And she did and she paid me more than I was going to charge her because I had a number in my head and she paid me more and I was like, okay, this might have a future in it. But, uh, yeah, weddings weddings can be hit or miss. And yeah, I've, yeah, for sure. I had a similar situation where um, it wasn't a bad wedding. It was actually friends of mine, but I had a second shooter, and luckily he was one of those second shooters that like was like right over my shoulder for some of the shots. And so I don't know if I corrupted or something happened to the card, and I couldn't find it or something mm. happened. I couldn't find like. So you've been there. I couldn't find the second half. It was like. So you the, know my pain. It was the reception, and I was just like, I didn't have send off. I didn't have father daughter oh dance. God. I was like, I just got to pay these people back. Like at this point, I'm gonna just take this L. But I was looking at his stuff, and he had enough of the important moments. Like he did like a second angle of the of the formals. And so we missed a few formals, but he had like an offside angle. And I was like, I was able to deliver those. And I was like, man, you saved me. And I found, ended up finding all the images later, but I was so stressed. And I was just like. Weddings will, like, they're so freaking stressful. So like, stressful. for real. Are you good, Jay? They will have you just like cringing. 
new venue to do oh new venue will do uh Damon is in the in the chat he's saying the new yes venue so the weddings. new venue will do weddings just to clarify yes thank just you, to clarify <laughs> thank you we will do weddings at the I new venue uh, oh, okay i got you i would love to do some you know so I if you're looking to get married i only shoot them i only shoot them and renew your vows Ugh, i only shoot them don't do this don't don't put me on the spot right now <laughs> I want no anniversary of coming up. Anniversary's coming up. That's a big space to rent out. We'll probably do the L. I got you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Moving me. right along. Moving right along. <laughs> um, so what is one of your, um, if you could look back on young Leslie getting started, is there anything that you would change or wish you had known earlier in this journey? Ooh, you know what? I don't know if it's anything that I would change, but what I will say is that if I could tell my younger self, you know, um, exactly the advice that I give for other photographers, mm -hmm. just believe in yourself, be your biggest, you know, like be yeah. your biggest cheerleader. I got you. And another thing that I will say is that if I could have learned the business side of photography early on, mm -hmm. I was so caught up in being an artist when I first started. It mm -hmm. was really extreme. Like, oh, I'm a, you know, that oh, line, just the art. I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my <laughs> shit and this, that, and the other. But I wasn't really, I didn't really have a grasp on how to run a business. Okay. When did you figure that out? We ain't going to tell. Think, do you think you fully, <laughs> okay, so I'll say, because I've been doing this for a while. I'm more comfortable with it. I don't think yeah. I've still figured it out. I mean, oh, I got it figured out now, but it took I'm years. Yeah. It took so many years of countless mistakes to yep. figure out what, to do. what I was doing wrong. And I knew that I had to figure it out because it was either going to be me giving up mm -hmm. my love of photography and just doing something else and going to work for somebody else. Yep. And I tried that and it was, it's not me. Yeah. It's not me. I'm not a good employee. I am not. I'm a horrible employee. Every job I've ever oh had. Oh my God. I'll I'm be a in there horrible like, why are we employee. Doing this? Yeah. Like, why are we doing this? Oh, this is how we do it. I don't like this. Mm -mm, I can't. No, I'm, I was I'm just done. such a rebel employee. Like, I was literally working in sales and I would like pick up the phone and hang it up just so I can get to my <laughs> get quota to for number. today. Just so I can get my number. And I was like, I got to stop doing this. <laughs> what are you doing with your, your life right now? Go back into mm -hmm. the lab and figure this shit out and figure out why you're not making money. Exactly. Why wasn't I making money? Because I wasn't running it as a business. I was running it as, oh, I'm an artist. Oh. Yeah. But once I figured out my pricing, mm -hmm. all of the back end stuff, marketing, putting money into your company, all of that stuff, yeah. once I got that down pat, it was like mm -hmm. everything else just kind of kind of made sense after that and kind of just started to make money and started to be profitable mm -hmm. and that's the thing is to be honest because like we are artists yes and our love is the art but photography is probably 15 percent of what we do right and facts a big 60 percent of it is the business you know like business. and the it's, rest of it is client just management client booking, management client experience Everything is mm -hmm. so much more that goes into photography. Yeah. That's why I, this is the, one of the things that I also tell new photographers. Mm -hmm. You have to really look at your profit and your loss. Yep. A lot of people just want to look at their profit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I made 500 off a photo shoot. How much time and money did it cost you to do that photo shoot? Yeah. After you get done looking at that, you probably only made a hundred dollars. Come out with twenty. So you're not charging enough. Not charging. You had to go back into the lab, spend mm -hmm. how many hours? 10, 20 hours retouching. Mm -hmm. You had to take twenty calls for the client because they was bugging the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah. That's all time. It's all That's time. your time. You over here preaching, Jason is right. testifying over here. All of that's time. <laughs> so now you you're down to ten dollars an hour at this point. Man, um, so yeah, you got to raise those rates. They're looking at it as $500 is a lot for a shoot. How much time and money did you put into that shoot? Exactly. How much time, how much money did you, did you spend setting up for it, mm -hmm. planning it out, the cost to run a studio? How long have you been shooting? How, how many long years? have you been shooting? Yeah. The years, mm -hmm. the, your equipment, yep. that's a charge for that. Every time I pick up my camera, I am, that's a usage charge. Okay. I'm using my camera. Yep. That, that costs to use. Okay. That's a rental. Like I when haven't I started get, charging usages. When I get when I book commercial shoots, mm -hmm. I charge for my camera. Yeah. 
it's a rental fee. I don't care if I own it. I'm, I'm using it and I'm you. So I'm renting it from myself. It's funny because uh, when I started doing commercial work and they started, uh, I think somebody asked me about that. I was like, oh, are there any other fees for like lighting or equipment? And I was like, I need to start taxing on this stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, you actually hurt my feelings. I told Damon last year uh, I was doing that all day shoot. And you were like, oh, I hope you're getting such and such for this. And I was like, I'm not charging enough. Like, this is. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, because I've, uh, I've raised rates. But I knew then when you talked to me, you were like, I'm not charging enough. I was like, I need to do something else with this. Because... Yeah, because at the end of the day, <laughs> when you look at all of your outgoing money, mm -hmm. it might not be what you think you made. Yeah. And yeah, I'm big on that. Like, yeah, I have a, I have spreadsheets for all of my numbers mm -hmm. because I know, I know my costs going in, what I want to make for my fees. And then after that, I charge a profit range. And so when people come to me and they're like, this is what I can do. I'm like, that's not even in the profit range. Like, mm -mm. For me to give you those two hours to drive yeah. down here to unload my car. Your gas. You always talk about my travel, car. Your <laughs> travel, your mileage. You also got to look at every single web website, every single yep. thing that you're paying out. Yep. I And the fees that go along with that. I got to look at the gallery that I use yep. to upload my work to. Charge that's a off. monthly fee. That's a monthly fee. All I got to put, I mean. The client management, the fees for paying. All of that. It's so much that goes on behind the scenes that I think a lot of people don't really think about. And so with that, it's kind of, um, it's definitely the business side of it. Because I think everyone's yeah. good. You, you know, once you get good at photography, you're, you're fine. Mm -hmm. The headaches and, and losing hair, like this little ball spot I got, the losing hair is going to be your, your, your business side. And the customer yeah. Side. Shut up. Ain't nobody asking That's going to be the side <laughs> that make you want to throw your camera when you look at how much money you, you want to make and you're mm -hmm. not making it. And that was a huge one for me. That's the, that's the biggest key. Because when you, especially like I have, I have a wife and kids and it's one of those things where it's like, to be able to supplement what I was making in corporate, like, mm -hmm. I can't, this isn't a game for me anymore. So it's definitely one of those. Yeah, and it's really for me now with having my rates at where they are, mm -hmm. teaching my client why that rate is what it is mm -hmm. and what I'm gonna provide for them. And consultation calls before I even book. Yep. Like, you might not be the right client and I might not be the right photographer for you. Yep. If you're immediately asking me, okay, what do I get and what's this and that, I might not be the right photographer. I might need to refer you to somebody else. Yeah. I might need to turn that money down. All money is not good money. You about to take it to church. <laughs> <Jason> <laughs> All money is not good money. No, is sometimes that... you got to turn down money because that's going to be a headache in the long run. You know what's funny? Um, I always complain about this because... Um, Every time I've gone into a consultation and I had that feeling in my gut, like, this is going to go left. Yeah. And I was like, it'll be okay. It always went left. And every time I tried to do a favor, every time I was like, oh, I got you. We're friends. Every time I did that, it bit me. And so I learned early on. And I, I put a post up about it, and a lot of people liked it. But I was like... Nobody ever expects discounted effort, so stop giving people discounts. And once I did that, I was just like, my, my game changed. And people come to me and like, hey, can you do me? Nope, because you're going to want these five photos retouched, and I'm going to need these six yeah. hours to do and that. And then here <laughs> is also another key, too, is okay. that when you are doing something for a discount or you are doing something for a friend, I still invoice. Yeah. You still want to invoice. You want to let them know what it would Would've cost. Cost. Got you. Okay. And then you just comp it. Got you. So you want to let them see what the value is yeah. that they're getting. Because sometimes people don't understand it. Oh, yeah, you want to do a uh, headshot. And it could be your brother or whatever. Yep. Let me let you know what, this, what a client normally mm -hmm. pays for this so you understand. Yeah. It's and not... you are more appreciative to what I'm doing for you yep. for free. Yep. And then you're going to still sign the contract in agreement to the amount of photos parents. that I'm giving you. The amount of photos that I'm giving you, if you want additional, this is what it's going to now yep. cost you. Because you ain't just going to get all your pictures yeah, or all not. your retouch. Because for me, I don't do my own retouch. I don't either. So I'm outsourcing it. So I'm paying somebody else. So mm -hmm. why should you get an unlimited number of images for free nobody else is getting? And you ain't paying nothing for it. So, yeah, you want to let them know what the value is. And mm -hmm. then they'll have a better understanding and a better appreciation. 
they'll be like, oh, I'm actually getting a shoot that was valued at $1,200. Yep. And what's funny is that um, I find that when people know that number, they will not only respect it more, but I think they put more of a value on it um, intrinsically. Yes, facts. And then they will, when they talk to their friends, it's no longer, oh, she did it for free. It's like, I got a $1,200 shoot from her. And then it's no longer a hookup, you know? Right. Because I, I have luckily been in the situation where my friends are like, hey, he did this for me. I don't know what his rate is, X, Y, Z. But I'm not in that boat where it's like, oh, you gave my friend a hookup. Because I'm like, I don't do that no more. Like, we don't, we're not in that Facts. boat anymore. So yeah. I'm in that room. Uh, hold on a second. We got a question in the chat. One second. During film photography, they, people really like your film stuff. It's been, it's been like three questions. Mm. During film photography back in the day, photographers wouldn't share info to help others. Nowadays, photographers will pass a lot of info on YouTube and other arenas. So, question, how do you feel about that? I know you touched on it earlier. I'm a big mm -hmm. proponent on sharing. Um, I find that, realistically, I can give you the whole recipe, mm -hmm. start to finish, where I put the lights, everything like that. My work will never look like your work. Your work will never be oh, my yeah, work. Oh, yeah, I have, like, I'll do, like, BTS. Yeah. I'll do workshops. I'll do, I have a few things on you YouTube You have your lighting right workshop now. coming up? Yes, I have a lighting workshop on um, March 19th Come at on, 10 March 19th, 10 a.m., Midtown yes, Collective. Yes, at Midtown Collective. <laughs> Come on. And I'm actually doing it on how to make, how to create stunning photos with one light. You know, it's, it's, um, we're on the same realm. It's yeah. interesting that you said that because I just did. People a, feel like they got to have a million lights. You can do a can lot do a with lot. one and a reflector. And a reflector and some V flats. V flats, a reflector, you can make some magic. I actually had someone email me and they were like, questioning the photo that I used to advertise. Oh, this wasn't made with one light. This wasn't created with one light. You need to come to the workshop. <laughs> well, so I'll show see. you how to do it. I'll show you how to do it. Come yeah. to the workshop. Because you can create a lot. You, it's bouncing off light. Because they feel like they see two catch lights and they think that that's two lights. Nope. That's a reflector. That could be an eye whitener. Man, I... Um, it's, it's tons of things, that scenarios. I saw a YouTube video and he was saying um, light is like water. Yes. And... If you want to get light somewhere, think of it like spraying a hose. Mm -hmm. Like if you're trying to bounce yes. something, it's the same way. Bounce it around. I <laughs> shoot a ton of stuff like with one light. Mm -hmm. My shoot ye yesterday was with one light. I'm constantly shooting with one light. Yeah. A, I'm a little bit lazy, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but I can make job, it work. That's yeah. how I started. Yeah, it's I started funny. with two lights. That's most of my setups are two lights. Most One of my two. yeah, most of my setups now I do a beauty dish for the face and I do a body light. Yeah. And a reflector cuz yeah. the um what I was finding especially with uh I'll say black people, but especially with us, I find that if you just try to depend on one for like a beauty look, sometimes it gets too hot in the face. So I try to always be able to control both elements. Mm, you might want to come to the workshop. I can I can do one. Don't don't I, but I will come to your workshop if you need yeah, me to film. Yeah, so cuz I, I can show you how to finagle that one light. Come and on, that's one all light. I shoot is I'm going to have a nice dark skin model in the come class. On. Yeah. Okay. We'll and I'm going to show you how to create a creamy dreamy March light. 19th. March 19th at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Midtown Collective. Midtown Collective. Be there, be square. Be there. I got you. <laughs> but yeah, I um, I did a whole, uh, I think two weeks ago, I did a whole session with just one. Like I, um, Lately, I've been doing this um, fashion look, this harsh light, like right behind the camera. Ooh. Straight, flat. And I've been liking it because it gives like this really dope highlight. Everything's kind of straight back. And I was like, okay. So I've been doing a lot of um, fashion looks that way, and it's been kind of rocking. Um, but yeah, so we're at 1015. We've been, we've been rocking for a little bit. Um, I always ask every photographer um, about your, you know, your origin story. You told us that if you could predict where you're going to be five years from now, what do you see for the future of photography? For me or just in general? In general. I mean, if you want to talk about where you think you'll be in five, that's cool too. But do you see? Well, yeah. Where let me just talk about where I'm gonna be in okay, five. Okay, where are you gonna so be? So for in five? me, in five years, I are I'm. 
talk to it's, it. It's some things I'm working on that okay. I can't totally put out there. We have not there, signed the NDA just but yet. But it will involve the aspect of me teaching on a higher platform. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to just put it like that. Come on, master yeah. class. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it's going to involve okay. me teaching. Um, and I'm going to leave it yeah. at that. You know, yeah. it's... Um, I always, I, I really enjoy teaching, um, even if it's just like mentoring. Um, mm -hmm. So that's one of those things that always, I won't say, I don't know if it brings me joy, but it's something that I enjoy just from a standpoint of, you know, each one reach one. I didn't really, I had a lot of YouTube university. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny, a lot of photographers that I used to follow, I now DM or message and, you know, have friendships with those people. So it's, it's always cool to kind of, see that come full circle yeah um, yes. oh and Go ahead, talk to me we um we are going to be putting out a master class on how to create um income okay revenue stream from running an event space nice how to oh. take your income from zero mm -hmm. to five slash six figures okay in less than one year okay with following our method of running an event space. Come on, methods. I like what you're doing. <laughs> no, I remember you guys, uh, how do you guys, what's the relationship like with Peer Space? Uh, I see that you guys hey, have been Mike. rocking it. Come on, come on, Mike. You know what's funny? I've always called him SK. I never, <laughs> <laughs> I never call him by his first his name. His name is Mike. What's up, Mike? I've Wagwan, been trying to get him on Mike. Show. Boss, what y'all talking about? <laughs> you um, gotta say Wagwan to Mike. Uh, I can't, I can't do the Wagwan. What's up, boss? <laughs> boss, so talk about Wagwan. <laughs> um, so, question. I always say, I saw this on uh, All the Smoke. They say, who is one photographer or one guest that I should have on the show? But the caveat is that you need to help get them on the show. Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Anyone. Anyone. Male, female, all races and stage. <clears throat> and I have to help get them. Out. I'm just saying, you don't necessarily have to advocate, but hey, I'm going to put you in con. You should reach out to Antoine. He's doing the show. Put in a good word for us on the Faux Talk podcast. How about Loretta Houston? Okay. She's a canon explorer of light. That is one of my goals. Yeah. Her, Vanessa Joy. Uh, aren't you? You're, I know a pro photo just put you. Just, uh, put you on their story today. I was Manifest like, it. Come on now. <laughs> Manifest it. But yes, I have uh, one of my long term goals has always been to be a <laughs> canon explorer of light. What's that? Yes, soaking up the knowledge. Let's do this. But yeah, um, but yeah, I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's this been, has been fun. real. It's been, it's definitely been real. Uh, to everybody, Leslie Andrews, photographer, <laughs> event space owner. Uh, my studio owner, so this is where I go. So Midtown Collective here in Atlanta, Georgia, Midtown, and over on the DeForest Hill side of things. Come check us out. You know, that's you, a good one that uh, Midtown what happened, what happened? Jamon just dropped. What he um, said? Sterling Picks. Yes. Ooh. Okay. He's amazing, and he just shot the cover photo for Mary J. Blige's new album. Come on. How now. about you know what? Why didn't I even think of this? Speaking of Sterling Picks. Okay. Amai Barber and Dante Maurice. Don't play with my emotions is all I'm saying. <laughs> They're been, members of Midtown Collective. I Why been, not? I have been following their work since Bring I them walked in here. In here. I'm here for it. Just, yeah. Y'all, I, I know a few people that know them. I've just never said, hey, put me in contact. But I would like yeah. it to be organic. But if you have if you have the connect, I will take it. Yeah. Because I would love it. Yeah. I follow them. I love their setups. And then you can bring them into the studio. I love studio. their covers. I would love to do it here. So let's do that. So yeah. yeah. Again, Leslie Andrews photo. Follow her on Instagram. Check her out. Drop your website for us real quick. It is LeslieAndrewsPhotography.com. LeslieAndrewsPhotography.com. Here on the Photog Podcast, episode five. Thank you, guys. Peace.